In the previous video, we went through the long process of getting 4K Basic loaded and running from paper tape. Today we're going to start with 4K Basic already running. Let's just take a quick overview of 4K Basic and then also look how we would load and save programs using paper tape. Alright, you can see we've already typed in an immediate command to print 2 plus 2. Uh, we could type in another one, say print a test string. 4K Basic wants everything in uppercase. If you type in lowercase, you'll get a syntax error. And now it's not a problem in the day because teletypes did everything in capitals only. So um, if you're using a terminal em emulator like we are here, you're going to want to turn on the caps lock key. All right, another major uh, typing issue is the backspace key. There isn't one. The destructive backspace we're all used to didn't come out in any of the Altair basics for another few years. Instead, the underscore key was used. So let's say you were typing a program line and you wanted to say, goodbye, but you've just typed hello by mistake. So we want to delete those five characters. You would type an underscore for each one of those. So O-L-L-E-H, you can barely see the underscores down there at the bottom of the screen. And then you would type what you really meant. And let's take a look and see if that really worked. You can see it did. Now unfortunately you may not have even been able to see that because it's so close to the bottom of the screen. But now that it's scrolled up, you can see that the underscore is delete. It takes a lot of getting used to. In fact, I never get used to it. Uh, I just end up retyping things a lot when using these older basics. All right, let's put in a simple program. We'll go through a loop 10 times. Print the, lo the loop iteration number. All right, and let's run it. Okay, the speed here is limited by the 110 baud that we're operating at simulating a teletype. Not so much basic. Basic itself could run faster. All right, so you've done all this work and you want to save this complex program you just wrote so that you can load it at some other time in the future. How would you do that? Well, there was no load or save commands in 4K basic. But the fact that your primary terminal was a teletype, which had a paper tape punch and a reader, and that it all came through the same serial port as the keyboard and then the printed output, teletype was basically a de facto built-in tool for storing and restoring loading programs. So for example, if I was simply to list this program to the teletype, but have the paper tape punch on while I did it, everything in that program would end up punched on the tape. So the procedure was basically like this. You would type list in order to get ready to list the program. But before you hit return, you would load your paper tape, feed some leader on it, then put it online and hit return. Everything you see coming up on this screen on a real teletype would be going straight to the punch. So that exact text of the program was now just punched onto the tape. Once it was done at this point, you would then feed some more trailer and, of course, rip your paper tape off and then put the teletype back online for normal operation. All right, and that was it. Now, one thing that's interesting is that everything we listed gets punched on that tape. So the OK at the end gets punched on the tape. And we'll see in a second that that ends up generating a syntax error when you read this tape back in. It doesn't affect anything, but that's just kind of an interesting side effect. All right, so let's see how we would load a program. So the new command erases all of memory. There's nothing in here anymore. What we're going to do is load a program. It's uh, a prime number benchmark, a little bit bigger one, so we have something more interesting to watch. And to load from paper tape, again, there is no load command, but since it comes in from the exact same serial port that the keyboard would have, BASIC doesn't know it's not being typed in. And at 110 baud, BASIC can easily keep up, even though that's faster than you would probably have typed the whole program. So I'm going to go ahead and send this file. And again, we're cheating. This is our paper tape. We're going to send an exact image of the uh, paper tape that was punched uh, by doing this list command. And it's a prime numbers benchmark. All right, so let's get this going. But what we're going to do is watch the computer down here. And if you look real carefully, you can see A6 flashing just, well, maybe not on the video. That would be the rate at which characters are coming in. The brighter flash you see is as each line is processed. So when a bright flash occurs across all the LEDs, that's when a return has come in and BASIC is digesting that line and converting it into internal format. 
All right, it's all done flashing. Let's take a look, and we can see that program is all loaded. There's the listing of what was sent in. It was, it'll show up on your screen. Uh, here is what came in off the paper tape. And if you look down at the bottom, you see, sure enough, it didn't like that OK and gives, it gave us a syntax error, but it doesn't hurt anything. All right, so now we can run that program. This is an interesting benchmark just to see how your, uh, your computer runs. But uh, here in the early stages, it's actually the baud rate that's sort of a limiting factor. As it takes longer and longer to calculate primes, then uh, the speed of the CPU is more of an issue. But we'll go ahead and abort that. All right, so that's really all you need to do to load and save programs. You don't need a command. You just list it. It gets punched onto the paper tape if you need it. Or you load a paper tape, and it reads in just as if you had typed it. All right, now here in the modern world, quite often we'll be running with the uh, terminal emulator like you see here, and we, we might not want to run at 110 baud. Let's say we wanted to run at 9600 baud. How would you load a program? Well, we can use the exact same technique. The only problem is that BASIC can't take uh, input at a full speed 9600 baud. What you'll find is that it can actually take the characters of a line that fast, but then once the line uh, is completed and it's, a return has come in, it needs some time to digest that line before more characters come in. Now, in the, uh, the old days, the way you would handle that is by punching nulls at the end of each line. So, for example, if you're going to run at 300 or 1200 baud, you would punch nulls at the end of the line, which, when read in, gave basic time to process the line until more valid data came in. So the nulls would, of course, be lost because BASIC was busy doing something else. When BASIC finished processing the line, it would then go back and start reading, and it would just find nulls, which it discarded, and then eventually validated the start of the next line came in. Now we can uh, simulate that in these emulators by simply putting a delay at the end of each line to simulate the amount of time the nulls would have taken. All right, we're going to do a video cut and switch this whole thing to 9600 baud and watch that. All right, we are back. What we've done is changed the baud rate in the computer to 9600 baud, and we've changed the baud rate of our terminal emulator here to 9600 baud. So things will run much faster than we were uh, using on the teletype. Now, we can load programs the exact same way, where it comes in over the serial port and BASIC thinks they're being typed in. And BASIC can actually handle 9600 baud for the characters in a line. But once a return is received for the end of the line, BASIC then needs some time before the next line comes in. And again, in the old days, that was done by adding nulls to the file at the end of, excuse me, at the end of each line in the file. And those nulls didn't matter that they were lost, and they was provided the time delay until the next batch of valid data came in at the start of the next line. In the terminal emulator, we can do that by adding a parameter that says delay 200 milliseconds after each line. You might have to play with this figure a bit, but 200 works pretty well unless you get into some really big programs and BASIC gets, uh, slows down a bit when it's loading a really long program and has to move things around in memory. So anyway, this is going to delay 200 milliseconds at the end of each line to give BASIC time to process the line. That's instead of having a bunch of nulls in the source file we're loading at the end of each line. Alright, so let's go ahead and send this file. And we're actually seeing it come in with a short delay at the end of each line. BASIC kept up, didn't complain about anything. Now, that it did complain about the OK at the end. Syntax error, that's normal, because we saved it out by simply doing a listing. Now we can run the program, and you see it up, up and running just like we expected. 9600 baud is a little bit nicer than working with 110 baud, so you get spoiled by this very quick, quickly. But it's very easy to load programs uh, using this technique uh, here in the modern day with a terminal emulator. All right, well, that does it for uh, this video. Now, the video was all done and shot with an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look, the feel, the features, and performance of a real Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. That way, you don't have to worry about damaging a museum quality or vintage quality machine as you use it. It also makes it more affordable and reliable. This is a great way to experience this exciting period in history hands-on. So be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about that great computer.